Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful, an article titled Hajj, the marvelous legacy of Abraham, written in 2006 by Dr. Sayyid Bashir Ahmad Kashmiri and presented by him. In his history of Arabs, Philip Hitti writes, quote, down the ages, Hajj has continued to serve as the major unifying influence in Islam and the most effective common bond among the diverse believers. It rendered almost every capable Muslim for force a traveler for once in his lifetime. The socializing influence of such a gathering of brotherhood of believers from the four quarters of earth is hard to overestimate. It afforded opportunity for Negroes Berbers, Chinese, Persians, Turks, Arabs, rich and poor, high and low, to fraternize and meet together on the common ground of faith. Of all world religions, Islam seems to have attained the largest measure of success in demolishing the barriers of race, color and nationality. Confirming to the divine command, some 4,000 years back, Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, set out from Hebron in Levant to the barren valley of Mecca in the Arabian desert. Along with him were his wife Hagar and their newborn son Ishmael. At Mecca, Abraham pleaded to Allah Rabbana inni askantu min zurriyati biwadin ghayri zi zar'in inda baytikal muharrami Rabbana liyuqimu salata faja'an afidatan min al-nasi tahwi ilayhim warzukhum min al-thamarati la'allahum yashkurun Rabbana innaka ta'lamu ma nukfi wa ma nu'lin wa ma yakhfa ala Allahi min shay'in fi al-ardi wa la fi al-samaa الحمد لله الذي وهب لي على الكبر إسماعيل وإسحاق إن ربي لسميع الدعاء رب اجعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء O oh Lord, I have made some of my offspring to dwell in the valley without cultivation by thy sacred house, in order, O oh Lord, that they may establish regular prayer to fill the hearts of some, so fill the hearts of some among men with love towards them and feed them with fruits so that they may give thanks. O oh our Lord, truly thou dost know what we conceal and what we reveal. For nothing, whatever, is hidden from God, whether on earth or in heavens. So, uh, praise be to Allah, who hath granted unto me in old age Ishmael and Isaac. For truly, my Lord, is he the hearer of prayer. O oh, my Lord, make me one who establishes regular prayers and also raise such among my offspring, O Lord, O our Lord, and accept thou my prayer, O our Lord, cover us with thy forgiveness, me and my partners, and all believers on the day of the reckoning, when the day of reckoning will be established. Quran, chapter 14, 37 to 41. The prayer of Abraham was granted by Allah, saying, إِذْ بَوَّأْنَا لِإِبْرَاهِيمَ مَكَانَ الْبَيْتِ أَنْ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِي شَيْءٌ وَطَحِّرْ بَيْتِيَ لِلطَّائِفِينَ وَالْقَائِمِينَ وَالرُّكَّعِ السُّجُودِ وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ حَجٍّ عَمِيقٍ 
ليشحدوا منافع لهم ويذكروا اسم الله في أيام معلومات على ما رزقهم من بحيمة الأنام فكلوا منها وأطعموا البائس الفقير ثم ليقضوا تفثهم وليوفوا نذورهم وليتوف وليتوفوا بالبيت العطيق ذلك ومن يعظم هرمات الله فهو خير له عند ربه وأحلت لكم الأنعام إلا ما يطلع عليكم فاجتنبوا الرجس من الأوثان واجتنبوا قول الزور Behold, we gave the sight to Abraham of the sacred house saying, associate not anything in worship with me and sanctify my house for those who can pass it round or stand up or bow or prostrate themselves therein in prayer and proclaim the pilgrimage among men they will come to thee on foot and mounted on every kind of camel lean on account of journeys through deep and distant mountain highways that they may witness the benefits provided for them and celebrate the name of God through the days appointed or cattle which he has provided for them for sacrifice then eat ye thereof and feed the distressed ones in want then let them complete the rites he prescribed for them perform their vows and again circumambulate the ancient house Quran chapter 22 6 to 29th verse. Section Rekindling Abraham's Mission. Ever since people have continued to flock to Mecca, keeping alive the tradition of Abraham, Abraham built the house of Allah Kaaba for worship of one and the only God, Allah. Later on through the history, people deviated from Abraham's mission and it became a place of pagan idolatry with idols and images of numerous godheads being worshipped there. Muhammad, the last messenger, pray peace and mercy be upon him, was commissioned by Allah to rekindle the mission of Abraham. It took him 23 years of his prophethood to fulfill the mission. After having migrated from Mecca to Medina to escape, the, to escape further persecution of his followers by, the, by Meccans, he established a society based on belief in only one God, Allah. He returned triumphant to Mecca in the 8th year of Hijrah from the 8th year of migration to Medina or in 6th 32 AD and cleared the house of Allah Kaaba of idols and reinstated it to the cause of Abraham, denouncing polytheism and worship one and the and to worship one and the only God Allah. During the last year of his prophetic mission in in tenth year of Hijrah, he performed his last Hajj, known as Hajjatul Wada or Hajj of Farewell and delivered his epoch making sermon he said O people quote O people lend me an attentive ear for I know for I know not whether after this year I shall ever be among you again therefore listen to what I am saying very carefully and take these words to those who could not present themselves here today. O people, just as you regard this month this day O people, just as you regard this month, this day, this city as sacred, so regard the life and property of every Muslim as sacred trust. Return the goods entrusted to you to their rightful owners. Hurt no one so that no one may hurt you. Remember that you will indeed meet your Lord and that he will indeed reckon you, reckon your deeds. Allah has forbidden for you to take usury, interest, 
Therefore, all interest obligations shall henceforth be waived. Your capital is yours to keep. You will neither inflict nor suffer any inequity. Allah has judged that there shall be no interest and that all the interest due to Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, Prophet's own uncle, be waived. Every right arising out of the homicide in pre-Islamic days is henceforth waived and the first such right I waive is that arising from the murder of Rabia ibn Harith. O people, the unbelievers indulge in tamper tampering with the calendar in order to make permissible what Allah has forbidden and to forbid what Allah has made permissible. With Allah the months are twelve in number, four of them are holy, three of these are successive and one occurs slightly, singly between the months of Jumada and Shaban. Beware of Satan for the safety of your religion. He has lost all hope of that he will be able to lead you astray in big things. So beware of following him in small things. O people, it is true that you have risked certain rights with regard to your woman, but they also have rights over you. Remember that you have taken them as your wives only under Allah's trust and with His permission. If they abide by your rights, then to them belongs the right to be fed and clothed in kindness. Do treat your women well and be kind to them for they are your partners and committed helpers. And it is your right that they do not make friends with anyone of whom you do not approve of. As well as never to be unchaste. O oh, people, listen to me in earnest. Worship Allah, say your daily five prayers, pass during the month of Ramadan and give your wealth in zakah. Perform Hajj if you can afford to. All mankind is from Adam and Adam, Adam and Eve. All mankind is from Adam and Eve. An Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab, nor a non-Arab has any superiority over an Arab. Also, a white has no superiority over a black, nor a black has any superiority over a white. By piety and good actions, learn that every Muslim is a brother of every Muslim and that Muslims constitute one brotherhood. Nothing shall be legitimate to a Muslim which belongs to a fellow Muslim until, unless it was given freely and willingly. Do not therefore do injustice to yourselves. Remember one day you will meet Allah and answer your deeds. So beware. Do not stray away from the path of righteousness after I am, I am gone. O people, no prophet or apostle will come after me, and no faith will be born again. Reason well, therefore, O people, and understand my words which I convey to you. I leave behind two things, the Quran and my tradition, the Sunnah. And if you follow, you, if you follow them, you will never go astray. All those who listen to me pass on my words to others and those others again to others and my last one and, and may the last ones understand my words better than those who listen to me directly now. Be my witness, O Allah, that I have conveyed your message to your people. A careful messing over reveals the attraction and the driving force that motivates millions of faithful every year to set out the coast to Mecca is their allegiance to the legacy of Abraham enshrined in the institution of Tawheed, oneness of God, that culminated at the hands of his great grandson Muhammad, peace and mercy be upon him. not only cleansed the sanctuary of Kaaba and purified the faith but established a society 
on the basis of Tawheed that established foundations for freedom, liberty, and dignity of all human beings. At the very outset of his book, The Pilgrimage, the famous Islamic writer, Dr. Ali Shariati, registers his impression about Hajj, saying, quote, in a sense, Hajj is a man's evolution towards Allah. It's a, symbol, it's a symbolic demonstration of the philosophy of creation of Adam. To further illustrate this, it may be stated that the performance of Hajj is a simultaneous show of many things. It's a show of creation, a show of history, a show of unity, and a show of the Islamic ideology, and a show of the unity of Ummah. Although the final pillars of Islamic, although the final pillars of Islamic faith, although the final pillar of the Islamic faith, Hajj is obligatory only upon those who can afford the journey. Yet through the ages, embarking on this reward, reward and enchanting journey has kept fascinating the believers. Men and women of devotion have saved, saved penny by penny all through their lives, through years for the required expenses with their eyes focused on the day, focused on the day when leaving behind them all their kith and kin, they could fulfill the dream of looking at the sacred house of Abraham and be one once again among the sea of and be one among the sea of white clad faithful chanting labbaik allahumma labbaik labbaik la sharika lak labbaik innal hamda wan ni'mata lak wal mulk la sharika lak here i am at thy service o lord here i am here i am at thy service and thou hast no partners Thine alone is all praise and all bounty, and thine alone is the sovereignty. Thou hast no partners. Is a dream of every faithful to dawn one day the unstitched white garb of Ahram that symbolizes equality, detachment from the materialistic impulses, and readiness for a march to the day of the judgment. It's a yearning to flow in the tide of devotees circumambulating the Kaaba, eager to kiss the black stone, remembering the founders, Abraham and Ishmael. It's a craving of every mother and father to return, to run between the hillocks of Safa and Marwa, remembering Hagar's expression. Compassion, remembering Hagar's compassion, anxiety and commitment to the cause, and to exclaim, how much revered is woman in Islam? Is the burning desire of the travelers to the holy land of Mecca to drink from the well of Zamzam, to prostrate in front of the mesmerizing ancient house of Allah, Kaaba? Is the craving to spend few nights at Mina, be part of the sea like gigantic gathering of the faithful at Arafat, and to supplicate there along with the faithful belonging to all colors? Once having invested so much of money, effort and emotion to be cleansed from the wickedness, every pilgrim is eager to condemn the Satan by stoning him, vowing not to return again to his fold. How nostalgic is it to spend the night in the barren desert land of Muzdalifa, practicing ascetism to offer sacrifice at Mina, shave or trim the hair connoting to renouncing the sinfulness and pledging for a new beginning. Everyone yearns to live, to complete the rites with concluding tawaf, with a mixed feeling of attainment of, and of sorrow of having to leave the spiritual milieu of the Holy Land. Still more fortunate are those who make it to visit to Medina, the city of the Prophet, Peace and mercy of Allah be upon him. The city of the beloved messenger and offer salam 
of gratitude to the greatest guide of mankind who accomplished the mission of Abraham. May peace and blessings be upon all of them. Thank you for watching and listening. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon all of you. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And mercy and blessings of all. Allah upon all of you.